Hi guys, it's Shell Sunbury Housewives. Welcome back to another video. If you're new to our channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna see future videos. Today, I am making a split tumbler using um, a 20 ounce skinny slim. And I'm also using some of this printable vinyl that I got from Expressions Vinyl. All the supplies will be listed in the description box below along with my website. Uh, this tumbler will be available on my website for purchase. So right now I am just um, measuring to see how much I am going to use. I'm not going to wrap the entire tumbler. Um, I mean, I do, but some of it's coming off. <laughs> so I'm just measuring to see um, exactly where I want to put it on at in the best... Um, coverage that I'm going to get. Once I figure out that, I'm going to peel off a corner of it and um, then just pull back about an inch, inch and a half of it and then lay it on my tumbler if I ever get to that point. Here we go. Um, I guess I pull more than just an inch and a half, about two inches. <laughs> I fold back the backing of that and then um, adhere it to the tumbler so that I make sure that it sticks. It'll stick. So that when I wrap it around, um, I get a nice seal and I won't get any air bubbles. Um, I'm not going for full coverage on this. Apparently I didn't like the way it sat, <laughs> so I rip it off. Um, this printable vinyl, um, it is a permanent, but I'm able to pull it up and reposition it as needed. Like I said, I'm not going for a complete coverage on this because I am going to be cutting some of it away to be able to do the split. There I go. I get it where I want it to. Um, I'm not going for top to bottom because as you'll see later, um, I add glitter to this. So. Once I get it to exactly where I want, then I'm gonna go ahead and start to um, lay down the rest of the glitter. And I just use my thumbs to, um, now I'm still pulling back. There we go. I'm using my thumbs to, and my fingers, <laughs> to lay down that just to make sure that it get, adheres nicely to the tumbler and um, don't get any bubbles. Any bubbles that I might get, I will take my um, X-Acto knife and poke any holes. Um, and like I said, this vinyl I'm able to pull up just to, I don't want any creasing at all. Um, once I get, and I'm doing this in real time so you can see, you know, that it wasn't something that I did just really super quick. And this did take me a little bit of time to do. And with this not being a straight tumbler, this is more difficult, but this is such a busy pattern. Like if I was doing a complete wrap, um, this would be so much easier, but this does, this does taper at the bottom. So the bottom is skinnier than the top. Okay. So once I got that lined up, um, you can see it doesn't match. That's okay because I'm not going for full coverage um, a wrap on this. So I'm going to be cutting to where the seams are since they do overlap. I'm not concerned about that. Um, I'm going to be cutting some of this vinyl away. That's probably a waste and I could have probably figured out where I was going to cut it off and only done that part, but I wasn't thinking. So I'm going to go ahead and take off, uh, or take some of this, um, wider painter's tape and um, figure out where exactly I want to cut away. And I'm not doing a straight line. I really wanted the split part to be wavy. So I'm laying down the first side on one side of where the seam is. Um, and this is why I wasn't too concerned about the seams not matching up because I'm cutting away the seam anyway. So 
So then I put my other piece of tape over and then I end up changing my mind because I want most of the leopard print to show and this would have been way too wide for what I was wanting to do and only a little bit of the leopard print would have been showing. So I end up taking it off and changing my mind and um, making it a smaller area that I'm cutting away. And then I take my X-Acto knife, this is a fresh blade, and I'm just making wavy lines all the way a down. A down? A down? That ain't a word. All the way down. Um, I didn't map it out before, I just completely just willy-nilly did all the way down. And on the same side, or on the same side, on the same thing on the other side. Um, I don't think this matched, but it ended up kind of matching, but um, it didn't have to. So then I um, tried to um, take off the vinyl and this is kind of where I kind of messed up, not thinking ahead, but you'll see where I pull off the uh, center section with the vinyl and it shows that nice crisp line, it's so satisfying. And I should have should have kept the excess tape that was remaining on still because I need to paint where I remove the vinyl. But I wasn't thinking. And I ended up removing that extra tape. And then I have to go back in. Here I go, removing that tape I'm like a dum dum. So don't do that. Learn from my mistake. And then I sit here, when I realize what I did, when I have to paint this, I'm like, well, that was dumb. I gotta go and tape this in again and cut those same exact lines so I don't get paint on my vinyl. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up, before I realize that I made a boo-boo, I'm gonna clean up the edges all the way around because when I put the vinyl on, of course it wasn't even. So I'm gonna go ahead and use tape as my guide to completely clean up the edges of the vinyl to make it even all the way around. Um, what of the vinyl that's still showing, if that makes sense. You'll see what I'm doing after, as I'm cutting. And I'm going very slow and I'm actually rolling the tumbler away from me instead of moving the knife. That way the knife is sitting still and the tumbler's controlling. So I'm not slipping and it's a perfectly straight line. And then I remove the tape to show that nice clean line of the vinyl my gosh i cannot think today i can never think then um <laughs> i think this is the point that i realized oh crap i should have left that tape on so i just sit and think for a second and realize there i go i'm thinking <laughs> so i grab my tape and i yep there i go I should have left that tape on. I'm a dum-dum. So I grab my tape and I proceed to mask it off and then carefully go over those squiggly lines and um, once again, I almost pulled off the other end again like a dum-dum. And I do the other side as well so that I can go in and paint 
the stainless portion. I do go ahead and wipe this down with uh, rubbing alcohol since I had my fingers all over it just to wipe off any oils and then I take some um, acrylic paint uh, it was raining that day so I couldn't really go out and spray paint it this is gonna take several coats and I'm not gonna make you watch all several coats of that um, just because it needs to be white so I do paint it with I think I ended up painting it three or four coats With the final coat of paint, I did mix some Mod Podge with it. Uh, and then I'm taking my makeup brush and doing the final coat. I'm not painting the bottom of it because I'm not putting any white glitter on the bottom. And then once that's done, I do take, oh, I throw that because I got paint on it. Uh, and a fresh sheet of parchment paper and sprinkling on some glitter. This glitter that I ended up using was just some cheap plain white glitter from Amazon that I had gotten in a big huge pack. There was no name on it, literally. Uh, if I can find it again, I will put it in the description box below. And I thought I was recording and I wasn't, but the bottom I am just painting with this acrylic black paint um, once that glitter had dried. So, and along the edges of where they, I cut off the vinyl. So I'm just carefully taking a paintbrush and going right up against that line. And I only needed to give this one coat. Once that paint dried, I did take some Mod Podge and I just pounced along the lines of where the vinyl and the glitter met. And then I take some, um, I think it's called Fool's Gold. I think I show you guys, but I'm not positive. Um, but I'm just taking that, um, Mod Podge and pouncing it along the lines. And it's a chunky, a chunk, well, apparently I've never used it before. But it's from the glitter guy. Fool's gold, yep, I was right. And then I'm just sprinkling on that um, line in between the white glitter and the vinyl. And I just go along each edge of the vinyl and the glitter on each side.
Once that was fully dried, I did give it three coats of Rust-Oleum two times clear spray. And now I'm mixing up my epoxy. Um, I mixed up a total of, I think 50 mLs, but I have I had like several tumblers to do. So um, I did 25 mLs of part A and part B. So I'm just mixing it up um, here. And for this particular tumbler, I just only used about 20 mLs. So I'm just mixing away here. And then I will turn on the tumbler and carefully apply the uh, epoxy. I'm very careful when I'm going over that glitter, even though I did spray it, I just don't wanna be rough around those, the chunky glitter, because I don't wanna knock anything loose and get it into where I don't want it. Now that the glitter is all applied, I decided I did want to add a little bit more glitter. So I'm carefully, at first I only wanted on the, the leopard vinyl and I wanted it to kind of waterfall up. So I started sprinkling it, just sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> and I uh, wanted it more full at the bottom and then just sporadically up at the top. So you see me sprinkling it there. And then I grabbed some champagne toast from the Glitter Heart Company and just sprinkling it on that leopard print. Um, a lot more at the bottom than at the top, uh, just to give it a little more fullness there at the bottom. Fullness? More coverage, more coverage. And then I decided to go ahead and add some of this chunky glitter on the white. Um, I just, that white was so stark and I wanted more oomph on that glitter. Um, the decal that I had chosen for this wasn't gonna cover the whole white, um, the whole white portion of that. And I just knew that I needed something more. So I decided to go ahead and add that chunky glitter. And I like that so much better. So go ahead and popping any bubbles that I might have on there. And then after two coats of epoxy, it was time to clean my rim. I pulled it off using my X-Acto knife and getting any excess epoxy off of that rim. And I did sand down any of the um, bumps that there might be. And here's my decal. So I cut out this decal that I had and I got I got this forever ago and if I can find it again on Etsy I will put it in the description box below so I with the same leopard print vinyl I cut out the bow and I'm just laying it on top of the messy bun lady and then with her sunglasses um, the reflection part it's the same leopard print so I add that to her as well
and then I'm adding her in on onto the tumbler. I set up my tumbler to make sure that she is straight as possible. And then once I know that she is, then I'll lay her down and really um, burnish her down onto the tumbler. And then pull off my transfer tape. Now the wording that I chose to put on here, the, the writing was so small, I had to do a reverse weed. Uh, Cause I knew if I tried to just weed it normally, it was gonna just eat up all of, yeah, it was gonna be bad. So I just went ahead and reverse weeded it. And yeah, that was fun. All these little tiny letters. So once I got all of that done, I just set up my tumbler again, make sure it's lined up right in placer, placer, placed the wording where I wanted it, and then laid it back down and burnished it down. And this saying just says, messy bun and getting stuff done. Hashtag mom life. I just love it. It's so cute. So now put it back on my turner after two more coats. And I did seal my DK, or my uh, vinyl. After two more coats of epoxy, this took it off my turner, cleaned up the rim, cleaned up the um, tumbler, and she's done. And she's beautiful. I love how she turned out. She is now available on my website. Link in the description box below. So if you like this video, give it a big giant thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.